Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the OK Grognard Show. It is June 16th, 2020, 9.30 a.m. Central in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday, so it is Cartography and World Building Day. But what will we have to say about it all when it comes right down to it? Looks like I'm alone in the channel this morning so far. I know people will be stopping in a little bit later, but it's always good to uh, keep the show up and running. I'm actually starting the show a minute or so late. So there you go. We weren't all there. I wasn't all there. And so it goes. Did a... Uh, did a giveaway yesterday. What I gave away was an admission to Virtual Game Hole Con, which is replacing Game Hole Con this year due to concerns over the coronavirus and COVID-19. They uh, got out in front of it pretty early. Smart move, I think, because obviously everybody else had contract interests that they had to deal with. Letting it go down to the wire, playing chicken with venues in regard to who was going to be on the hook for various costs. Requiring, in some cases, that force majeure a uh, type of clause which uh, allows somebody to get out of a contract due to extenuating, extreme extenuating or emergency circumstances uh, is a general idea of what's behind it. The legal language, not being a lawyer, let's make that clear, is not something I deal with. Todd, Article Justin Carr, good to see you, buddy. Anywho, uh, they are doing, Game Hole Con is doing a uh, virtual convention, and yesterday I gave as a giveaway prize an admission to a badge for that convention. Um, Heath won it. Heath from Adelaide in Australia. You might know him as the Antipodean D20 on Facebook and other places. You m will find very few people as enthusiastic about gaming, as positive as, uh, as you will find in Heath. I try to keep upbeat myself and very positive, but I'll tell you, I'm a step behind that man and a few others just a bundle of energy positive vibes and good natured lost nomad how you doing buddy good to see you thanks for popping in so cartography and world building I wanted to uh, look at some stuff today but I got behind on a few things and I'm afraid it has me somewhat discombobulated. Do we have any general questions about cartography and world building from you guys in the uh, in the chat? Because uh, I guess there are times I should probably be um, taking a look at that as. Uh, Typing something over here. Let's see. An engineering. Nope, that's not the one. There it is. Engineering Dungeons. Okay. So, um, there's a product. Here, well, let me double check and make sure. Good morning. There's a, ah, here's something. I've been using Incarnate for lightweight map making needs lately. I've heard that's pretty good. I don't have any experience with that, but um, if you could delineate some of the things you find 
that make that a useful mapping software I'm not saying that it isn't unless you do I'm saying just to help define that a little bit you say making lightweight maps I assume then that it's uh, very accessible I assume that it's a free program yes or no to cost money uh, lightweight maps I assume it's a quick uh, program to use and has a low learning curve so you can jump right in at it uh, are those the sort of things you would say are true about incarnate incarnate which uh, as I say very good very popular very well received program out there so I have no doubt it's good I'm just trying to help define it a little bit for people that might be listening that don't aren't familiar for me what makes it useful was time to productivity yes I haven't gone got the time or inclination to learn complicated software I hear you yeah some software is pretty uh, time intensive it is pretty powerful though I started with a free version but did end up plunking down cash for the subscription that speaks well to software for sure they give you enough of a taste that you actually want to pick up uh, a, uh, a cost a version that has a cost to it because you use the free version it says a lot for both the free version and the overall software uh, Lost Nomad asks him are you able to do much with the free version of Incarnate or does it require the pro version to do much I was happy with the map I created with the free version Todd says so you know able to do enough with the free version to make it useful while at the same time having it uh, pique the interest in using the version that costs a little money uh, let me ask is it uh, buy the software one and done or is it a subscription you pay for it monthly annually perhaps um, I'm sure they're constantly updating it as they find things that are problematic or that as they find new features they want to introduce because I'm sure they're I'm sure they're people that I'm sure they're cartographers that use their own software I don't doubt you don't uh, move into that area of uh, using uh, of creating cartography software unless of course you're already interested in making maps yourself annual subscription he says very good yep links are just coming up as asterisks we'll have to uh, we'll have to just uh, let that go that's part of twitch I, I think there's a way you can allow links through or whatever I'm not gonna dig around though and look for that right now I believe I believe you that it's a good map it's enough for you to say so um, obviously if it wasn't good you wouldn't be satisfied and wouldn't be talking about it as such so that's all good looks like annual or monthly option mm hmm I think most uh, most software these days is going that way it makes sense too because the um, the cost for a company for a software company to stay on top of the bugs and the potential uh, potential intrusion by hackers to uh, mess with anybody who has that software on their computer um, security issues um, update issues just to keep software up and running properly in conjunction with various uh, operating systems and then further anytime they find new ways to improve a software to add a new feature to make something faster or better or cleaner has got to cost money there's time invested in that if not other resources and um, subscriptions just seem like the smart way to go I can get this software 
as it stands right now for this much money. If that software is not going to work in a year, it doesn't do me any good to plunk down five times that amount of money to own that software now. Some people disagree with that stance. They prefer to own something. I think that's an illusion. I don't think... Uh, you know, I'll get into forums, and we were talking about other software for... And this, you know, this goes into world building, because you've got to have... And cartography, you've got to have software to make all this stuff happen. So this is a good conversation topic for today. Um, not just in regard to map-making programs, but also in regard to other software. I use Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, and I use... Uh, Windows 365 and um, the uh, the usefulness of those um, in part is due to the fact that because I pay a subscription fee they're updated they're regularly updated they're constantly finding, you know, whenever they find bugs which are inevitable, they're fixing them. Whenever they see anything that could be a potential security issue, they're adjusting, they're staying ahead of the curve on those things. They're two top software companies, so they're at the forefront of those uh, efforts. They're also uh, constantly making them better. And when I see somebody in a creative forum that is complaining about how they're yeah you know, they have these dual complaints on the one hand oh I don't want to play a subscription I bought this one type of software some time ago and I just want to keep using it ad infinitum and then on the other hand they're complaining oh it's buggy it doesn't work with this program that I have now the formats are different than each other um, I can no longer use that old file with it. Uh, when I try to uh, export something from it to something else, it it doesn't uh, it doesn't translate uh, cleanly. All of these are problems with using old software, and all the time spent trying to jump through all these hoops to make some old crappy software work in my opinion would be better spent just doing the creative work putting something out there not worrying about those problems but you know you can't convince some people they need to own something and they feel like they need to own something and they think that when they get a piece of software, they own some rights to it. But if they looked at the legal definitions and the, the language they agree to when they download it or they purchase it, they don't own anything. There's really no ownership there. It could all disappear tomorrow. It could all be thwarted with uh, one particular... Uh, uh, operating system update and they'd be left holding a empty tin can with no string attached to it if that's a metaphor I can use and uh, so too with cartography software really subscriptions are the way to go if uh, if you can't afford them it's understandable and I'm Honestly, I'm I'm in a similar vein when it comes to uh, things like Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime. I don't make annual purchases of those things. I let them languish as they are. And then once, maybe twice a year for something like a Netflix, I'll pick up a I'll pick a month long subscription up when I know I'm going to be having some time to actually make use of it. I'll pick up a month-long subscription and I'll binge the two or three programs I've been hearing about for the last year that were worthwhile, worth my time to watch. With Amazon Prime, 
Um, <clears throat> it mainly has to do with the video portion of it for me. Uh, because, you know, waiting a day or two extra to have something delivered doesn't make any difference to me. I, having something a day or two earlier, I think in 99 cases out of 100, make no difference and there's always a free option for whatever it is if you don't mind waiting for it what is something that is worth getting a subscription for might be for particular shows this last year Mandalorian uh, was a uh, Disney Prime thing so I got a month of Disney Prime I watched the freebie I waited a couple of weeks until episodes two and three were already available. I picked up a month-long subscription, which got me through the day after the last episode dropped. I caught up with the two or three I'd been waiting on, and then watched the rest of them as they came out. And the day after the last one came out, my subscription ended. And you know what? That's all I that's all I wanted it for. So, you know. Having having stuff around, I totally understand people that have plenty of money and want to pick up full subscriptions to things to have them at their fingertips on a regular basis. And I understand that because that's how I feel about the, uh, the uh, various softwares used for um, producing gaming materials and you know as often as I put stuff out it might not seem like I need it but in truth I've got you know plenty of stuff in the works that uh, I work it at my own pace and I want to be able to open those things up and use them as I as I desire and I like being able to put things out whenever I care to you guys checking out the Discord? Yeah, you know, I don't use Discord all that much. There's a few problems with it, in my opinion. It's useful for conversations and face-to-face -face video chats, too. And I'll use it when I need to for these virtual game conventions and that sort of thing. But for the most part, it reminds me of old message boards where people get to... Uh, you know, plunk in and plunk out at their leisure and snipe and do that sort of thing. I see too much of that on various Discord servers. And while people do try to keep those things clean and stuff, I don't need another headache. I don't want another, I don't want my so-called Discord server to be used on a regular basis and just have another thing that I have to oversee and... Uh, moderate and administrate that's not a way I want to spend my time so my discord server generally just languishes I use it when I'm playing some games like with Tom Wom or other people when we're playing a uh, virtual tabletop board game to be able to communicate about the game as we play but that's about the extent of how much I use it at this point it just uh, it's just not something that's worth my time to uh, to keep up and regularly use at this point. I don't know. Maybe somewhere down the line that'll change. It's like uh, Instagram or Twitter for me. Uh, well, I feel I need to have a presence there, in name at least. And I'll put links out there to other material, whether it's uh, YouTube links for the show or other things that I've uh, put out. Um, sales that I might be running on products and whatnot. Well, I n need those uh, interfaces to reach the wider audience that I want to reach. I don't use those on a regular basis. Twitter or Instagram, they're just not... They're just not time-effective ways of communicating with people. Facebook, for all its evils, <laughs> as some people would say, uh is a very effective tool for reaching large groups of people with uh, interesting topics. I do find these days, 
and I've done this with the OK Grognard Show Facebook forum or Facebook group. I created a group uh, whereby I can communicate to gamer friends without uh, having to use my timeline overly on my profile because that's become problematic with Facebook algorithms being what they are. You drop something on your timeline, you don't know how many people it's going to reach. You ask people to be part of a group and you communicate to them through that group if they're part of that group and they're at all interested, they're going to get that uh, information. So that's mainly mainly why I created the Facebook group there. Mayway, I've tried using. MeWe, I've tried using. Um, and I, you know, I keep a presence there. For the last two and a half years, I've been regularly posting over there. But the open areas over there tend to be a bit of a cesspool. Everybody, uh, you know, there's no, there's no narrow. In the uh, in the groups, everybody wants to start a group. You know, you, you, I'm an old school gamer, right? Do I join the 12 different groups that already exist? No, I create my own. Okay. That's useful. Another group. Yet another group. And it just seems like uh, you get invites regularly for this new group that cropped up with three people that don't like being part of that group with so-and-so or this other group with these other 12 people that they don't get along with. So MeWe has kind of been a poor follow-up to Google+. Plus. In any event, we're straying pretty far from cartography and world building, but when you think about it, these avenues to communication and creativity are part and parcel of what has become modern cartography and world building collective resources. So talking about the software, talking about those uh, interfaces of various social media conduits are an important part of what is cartography and world building for RPGs today. So, well worth discussing them, at least in the abstract, if not specific examples, which, I don't know, probably just bogged down the conversation even more, right? So, there we go. There's me uh, on that title page, right? Hunched over a book. I shaved my beard off, by the way. You saw that yesterday and the day before, if you were watching the show. The, um, hmm, yeah, you know what, we're at 23 minutes, I think we'll just, uh, wrap this one up rather than to get into another subject, we can have a, uh, slightly shorter show rather than a longer show today, I will make mention of the fact that, <laughs> yeah, beardless me, clean shaven, Get tired of the gray every now and then, right? Don't forget about Harryhausen Day coming up two weeks from yesterday, so June 29th. It's an all-day affair. For me, it'll be an all-weekend affair. I'll be watching Harryhausen movies starting on Friday. Check them out on Saturday and Sunday and on into Monday, actual Harryhausen Day. He would have been 100 on June 29th. He died at the age of 92 in 2013 in May early May, and uh, to say he was a pioneer in stop-motion animation would be an understatement. He may well have been the prime mover of that type of filmmaking his entire life and on afterward with the number of people that he influenced and the enduring quality of the work that he did produce while he was active. Which takes him basically from the uh, 50s on through, I think, 81, Clash of the Titans, 1980. Don't have it at my fingertips, but it's a, uh, it's a pretty long career. 
the fact that he then went on to live another 30 years uh, and enjoy his life and enjoy the success his life brought for him I think is a uh, is a wonderful thing for him um, I can imagine that his life was all the longer because he was able to step back from the stresses of the modern age that would have uh, made continuing to work a more difficult premise understanding that certainly there were film industry stresses that probably he had to negotiate and navigate during the course of his career but I'm sure those things just became even more untenable in the face of modern computer graphic uh, effects that would have been uh, the giant he would have had to slay with a simpler approach such that he was using with stop-motion animation let's also take a look at the rest of the schedule for the week of course cartography and world building was today and we talked about software and social media interfaces for creative exploration and collective work. Tomorrow we'll talk about campaign discussion on uh, Grimwald. Uh, specifically, I'm not sure. We'll find out then. Crafting and painting on Thursday. We've got building virtual tabletop adventures on Friday. Saturday, another cartoon review. I think we're on to episode four of Conan the Adventurer animated series from 1992 season one we'll get into the final throws of the rules retrospective on Sunday for David M. Prada's advanced Dungeons and Dragons initiative and combat rules tables slash whatever it is 2.2 version of the document he put out in 2006 back around on Monday to the weekly news and the giveaway and then we'll be back here next week on Tuesday for more cartography and world building we'll get into some more specifics good to take a break from the usual mechanical nature of this type of subject matter and into some more kind of a step back overview of um, of dealing with the uh, subject so every now and then it's a good way to do it I want to thank everybody for joining me today in the stream chat on twitch if you're in here and you're lurking be sure to follow and then chime in on the stream chat because that puts you automatically in for the weekly drawing I think uh, next week I think we'll do another well let me wait I'm still working out the details on doing the <coughs> doing the um, um, gifting of the badge for game hole con I want to make sure that all goes smooth enough and that I have a process in place if I'm going to give away more of them Heath won the first one there may be more of those if not, there'll be something else for next Monday, and that'll be good. I want to thank you also. If you're checking in on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Maybe make a comment. Feedback is good. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody. You have a great day.